Hi, it's great to be back. Wonderful. So, you, I mean, you've had a, 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 you know, a lot going on. You've been going to a lot of conferences and stuff. What's, what's the news on tech and immigration space and, and management, really? Yeah, well, I have been going on a lot of conferences lately, especially the most recent one, which was the first in-person conference that I attended since the COVID lockdown. And that was the ABA Tech Show in Chicago just uh, several weeks ago. So that was really exciting. And I went with a group from AILA and um, it was just totally awesome, even though apparently, you know, there weren't as many people as usually come in person yeah. to this type of conference. It was still a really, really good turnout. And I really wished I had seen more immigration lawyers there, but, you know, probably two factors, COVID, you know, being one of them. But I don't know if um, many immigration lawyers perhaps think that that conference is really maybe worth it for them. You know, we have yeah. ALA, we have our own conferences and, you know, it's, it's not cheap, of course, to go there, right? Pay yeah. for all of that. But for me, it was really, really eye-opening and a really, really positive experience. So I'd love for hopefully more immigration lawyers in the future to attend. You know, one thing to think about is when you go to events that are not purely immigration lawyers, that's a great referral source because you meet personal injury lawyers and we're federal practice so whoever's there could could send us exactly. clients so it's actually a good marketing exactly. to us it pays it you definitely if you get to know a couple of people there it'll pay for itself uh in, in the media right. term uh but you did do a great write-up actually uh, about all the things you've learned uh did i keep it i, I read it and i was like that was a long one so i, I took different stuff because i wanted to read one line and think about it and so it took me long to read i wish i kept it open but find it so i want to go over some key stuff actually i put notes somewhere two or three of them that i'm like i got to talk with you about let me see if i <laughs> actually right I, i'm here. trying to look for the post that i created and of course i'm not finding it right now but um well, i got a couple that yeah. really touched me i was like okay this is good so um, you know, if we're, we didn't plan this conversation out. There's so much we could talk about. So for those listening, we're just kind of like, just, just going on, on this. It's not as planned because I'm excited to talk with you. So I just want to bring up some sort of first, I was hoping to talk about the ABS stuff after a while, then I just went straight into it. So one thing says often a person does not even know the lawyer that a lawyer could help them. So you had these notes and you said things, takeaways. I mean, literally, uh, find the link, send it to me. So we can have the show notes so people could visit it. It says like absolutely the first thing you should do this week when you hear this, download this, read this. But one line you wrote in there uh, that impressed you was someone saying, often a person does not even know that a lawyer could help them. And I, it's just crazy to think that because we do immigration. It's like, obviously, you're going to call a lawyer, ask him what I-130 is, what removal is, what waivers are. But I frequently have clients who like are in a mess. I'm like, why don't you talk about a lawyer with this before? They're like, I didn't know that that was a thing. I'm like, how do you not know that was a thing? <laughs> I'm like, obviously, but yeah. that is how it is. Yeah. So yeah. that's such a Absolutely. key thing. Absolutely. And it, it definitely applies to our in, in industry as well, because, you know, keep in mind, this conference is for the entire legal industry, right? Yeah. And I highly doubt that it was probably the, um, I think that was actually a comment from the Clio Trends Report. Of course, the CEO from Clio was there at the ABA Tech Show. He's awesome. He gave a lot of really good uh, presentations. But, you know, it did strike me too, which is why it was one of the comments I, I noted, because you're right, in our field, so many people, they'll go to the notary down the street, the notario, right? They'll have their friend help them. You know, they'll, of course, um, you know, not even think of hiring an immigration lawyer maybe for a case that they think is basic but as we all know some of the most basic <laughs> cases can get pretty complicated quickly right yeah yeah i'll deal with a couple right now it's name spelling incorrect and like don't match this this and that just like things you never expect so that's something that pops up and it goes into uh, the importance of helping educate people and like i do a lot of youtube videos there's people who try to like just research what's going on and they find a lawyer talking about it they may not have yeah. known they could have hired a lawyer. At least there's just better education. I mean, the first step, and what we do as lawyers is help disseminate knowledge, uh, complex knowledge, ease it up, that uh, you know, filter it, clean it up, and provide it for people at a cost, at a fee. But more and more with technology, it's a lot of it is going for free to help people because uh, access to justice. I mean, the stats I think you had in there too, how few people actually hire lawyers or could afford lawyers. So there has to be a component of the community service that we put as much information about. There's always the disclaimer that this is educational only, not intended for the individual legal advice, but I, it's better than nothing, I think. So it's good to have this stuff out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, you know, what I heard at this one 